What's up, Cage Siders? Welcome to episode, I think it's nine. It has been a while since I've done one of these, and for that, I have profoundly apologize to the 50 or 60 people who have watched one of the previous eight of these. This is like a house of fire! Now I'm coming in. My name's Sean Ruder, and you're on CagesideSeats.com or our YouTube channel. Because that's where I like to talk about pro wrestling. And that's what we do on this year. Video cast like a house of fire. Like I said, it's been a while. I apologize for that. SummerSlam things got a little crazy in in the wrestling world and in my life personally. Nothing bad, just just stuff. And uh, school starting up again, so I'm gonna have to make this a priority to get on here and talk to you guys about stuff that's going on. Hopefully, like I said, um, I think I was trying to do two a week. I haven't done one in a couple of weeks, so maybe I'll try to catch up and knock a few out. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about today is, um, you know, I feel like there's there's a lot of negativity, and right, rightfully so, coming out of Monday Night's Raw and just things that have gone down since SummerSlam. SummerSlam was a big high for a lot of people um, for a, kind of the opposite reasons of why Brock Lesnar's last pay-per-view appearance was a big high for people who were down on The Undertaker. The victory over Undertaker initially and then sort of turned around on that, whereas now I feel like people are were down. We're very excited about the, the defeat of John Cena, and especially the way that he was defeated at SummerSlam at the hands of the Beast Incarnate Brock Lesnar, and now based partially on how WWE has handled it since, and partially just on you know our realization of what that um, what that extended squash match means. People are a little bit more down on it now than they were in the uh, in the wee hours of the morning a couple of Sundays ago. The, uh, so that's really what I wanted, I mean, that's, I think there's a lot of other stuff going on that could take me through, um, you know, two hours of video here, and, and has over the course of the last couple of weeks in my pretty post-Raw podcast with, uh, my buddy Matt Roth, and this past week special appearance by the returning general, Gino Morasco, anybody who's been missing out on their Gino time, can go, uh, check that out this past Monday's podcast, the, the embedded player, that is most of your, uh, most of your cage side live posts here on, or cage side, I don't know, cage side seats, where the heck are we? That's where we are, damn it. So, negativity, and trying to not get sucked into that. I think that's part of why I haven't done any video casts, that I didn't feel like I had a lot new to say about things that were going on in WWE right now. Uh, we've covered the bases pretty well on those. I covered my feelings about Lesnar's win in my Excited and Afraid column that I wrote, again, in the, the wee hours of Monday morning a couple of weeks ago, and not much has changed since then. I, and the big thing that has changed is that Cena, they kept him off TV for a week. He wasn't on Raw or SmackDown. He showed up at a house show. He came back to Raw this week, basically saying the same stuff that he always says. You know, it's, it's taught him something, even though we can't see any changes in his character. He's now gonna hustle, conquer, and retweet or something. I might be getting people's catch base catchphrases confused there, but you get the gist of it. Um, the other big thing that happened on Monday night is that he basically squashed the entire Wyatt family. Mark Henry and Big Show were there to help because they're the new... They're taking the Usos' job as friendly tag team that will run in and help you team people. And so that happened. And Bray Wyatt is not in a good place as a result of it. Which says, you know, doesn't even get into where Luke Harper is. Two really talented guys that deserve better, but again, that's probably a whole, whole other subject along with other things. So what I wanted, I mean, just, I can't personally get too bogged down in the negative. I think about it, but if I, if I really went there and lived there, I wouldn't watch wrestling. I wouldn't do a lot of things. That's just something I've learned in my decades on the planet as an old ass man. Um, so as as afraid as I am about the possibility that John Cena will win at Night of Champions, which I still, you know, it's John Cena, so that is always something that I will consider in my mind. Uh, the other possibility that, uh, you know, Gino and I got a little loud about in the Raw post-show, um, again, which this is not, just to clarify anybody that listened to that or is going to listen to that, this is not my preferred booking, but I could see a scenario, given what we've been given so far with the Lesnar squash at SummerSlam and, uh, and Cena's comeback on Monday, 
where they tell a redemption story for John Cena now, where he is somehow screwed out of the title at Night of Champions in the rematch and um, begins to come back and is the guy that ends up going over Lesnar at, you know, down the road somewhere, probably WrestleMania, or maybe before WrestleMania, maybe at the Rumble, to, you know, put John Cena over more, because that's what we need to do. We live in a world where that needs to happen. But he's a cash cow, and, you know, I think he's getting his win back at some point. I just hope it's, like I said, I just hope it's not a Night of Champions. You know, that's really short sighted and this is away a lot of money we could make off of Lesnar. But I could see it I could see either one of those things happening. I could also see the you know, the big the rumored buzz being that, you know, Roman Reigns gets that rub after he gets built up over the long haul on the way to WrestleMania. That uh, that has become more intriguing and uh, enticing an option to me based on him reinserting himself back into the shield breakup story, which I don't read anything of mine. Or watch anything that I run my mouth about. It's one of my favorite stories <clears throat> in a long time, and keeping it going, especially while Dean Ambrose is out filming a movie, is is a good thing, and will be a really good thing for Reigns in the long term. I think he was he was losing some of his babyface appeal by not being attached to that story and putting him back into it. it gives us all a reason to cheer him on again, other than the fact that he's a badass with four point five years of doom. Um. Which to me, the the lack of moves isn't the problem. It's the lack of uh, and the lack of a seemingly. It's a, it, I guess it's, this is the worst ten seconds of video you'll ever see me stammer over. He doesn't seem to know how to tell a story. He doesn't have that. He hasn't learned in match psychology very well yet. Uh, he gets the big beats of I'm getting beat up. Now I'm coming back. Now I'm back. Now you lose. But the transitions aren't there yet, so I think he really needs to learn that. Maybe he can learn that by WrestleMania 31 and get the rub of rubs by beating Lesnar. I think that's probably one of the harder things to learn, because I think for a lot of guys that is a natural, I mean, a lot of your greats, that's a natural skill or something that they had learned by this point, however old Reigns is now, I think he's at least in his late 20s. Um, he would like to see that and then see him pick up some of the more, like, the signature spots, the stuff that he already has are the kind of things that I think are easier to teach. The stuff that he doesn't have are the things that are harder to teach, if that makes sense. So I'm a little bit hesitant on pulling the trigger on him so quickly, and I know WrestleMania 31 doesn't seem so quickly. It's like eight months away, but it's pretty quick in the in the big scheme of you know, trying to learn how to carry a company on your shoulders, which is what people are wanting Reigns to be able to do. So, all that said, that's why I'm excited about this story and about WWE right now. Because, well, I think that they've painted themselves into a pretty nasty corner by squashing Cena, and especially by booking the rematch so quickly, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's always exciting. I mean, that's what we want, right? This is drama. It's scripted entertainment. You don't want to be able to say, don't ask me what the hell's going on with my hair there. Um, this is a random ass. See, this is why I haven't done one of these in two weeks. I'm not doing that. Anyway. I am excited about the WWE product because I don't know what's going to happen. I wish there was a heck of a lot more going on in the mid card. Um, I wish we were building somebody other than John Cena again or a green guy with a lot of charisma that's hard to describe and reigns. Um, you know, I wish Dean Ambrose wasn't gone. I wish Daniel Bryan wasn't hurt. I wish CM Punk was still here. Yada, yada, yada. But I can't, like I said, I, just for me personally, if I dwelled on, well, on those things, a guy whose podcast title is as if, like, uh, you know, an old English word, like a fire in it, is a great use of the word dwell, but fact. Um, I can't dwell on those negative things. If I do that, I will stop watching the product, I'll be a bitter bastard, and I don't want that. So I am excited that I don't know where they're going to go, and I hope that they have uh, a trick or two up their sleeves, or heaven forbid, an actual plan for where this is going, because. You know, I think there's a lot of interesting ways that they can go with it, and, and, you know, a lot of things that they can do that will keep us talking, which is why we're here. Even when we're bitching, we're talking, and that's, you know, that's, it's a pastime, it's a hobby, it's an art form that we like to kick around, even when it's being done poorly. Um, I hope that they have reasons for why they're doing that, because that just makes it fun to discuss, rather than just tear it down. So that's where I'm coming from right now. I, you know, I hope I get a little bit inspired. I got a few ideas of things I want to talk about. I haven't. I've still been reading WWE comics, um, and I have a bunch of thoughts on those. I don't know if 
somebody else cares to hear them, but uh, that'll be hopefully be a post or something that'll come your way soon when I find some spare time. Um, I also want to go back and look at, I do this weekly um, fan vote thing called the S3. I know a lot of people who watch this probably follow that. It comes out on Sundays where you vote for your favorite performance of the previous week and from a, kind of a smart fan perspective so you can pick whatever criteria you want to to vote on it. Uh, check that out if you don't already. One thing that I'm thinking about doing in, in either in written form again or hopefully maybe it's easier to talk about is looking back at the beginning of the year you guys voted you guys and gals voted on a few people that you thought might win the year in that in that running fan poll and I want to look back go back and look at who who those folks were and and where they stand right now as, as we approach kind of the midway point of this season like WrestleMania for WrestleMania so those are some things to look forward to um but I'm curious to see I mean are you guys I know there there are a lot of folks that are really down coming off of a, a screwed up episode of Raw on Monday, but are you down on the product overall? Are you still, do you still see good ways out of it? What's keeping you around? Because that's, you know, that's the question. I, mean, I don't think anybody's here because we like being miserable, so uh, what is it about the WWE product right now that's keeping you around and then as we deal with all the crap that, you know, where they don't know what they're doing or they're pushing the wrong people again, you know, they're in the middle of a big show push. Yay, it must be autumn. Anyway, so let us know about that. I'll include some links to some things that I sort of have alluded to here or, or things that I think are germane to this discussion. And, uh, and like I said, I hope to be back sooner than you know next week or certainly, certainly sooner than two weeks. If nothing else, you'll see me on Monday Night Raw post-show cage side live with my man Matt Robb. If you know, if Tom fired her or she hasn't been super mad at me for using her boy word on the last podcast, we're going to get Lady J on there too. And, um, you know, I mean, if PC doesn't come back soon, we will continue to deal with it.